see if any damage. Are those just labels? Labels? Yep. Mm -hmm. 19 days and 23 days, and you can also mark them there. You said nine? Yeah. Nine ish. Okay, go ahead and pull out. Dr. Wilson, what did you use to uh, sedate the horse again? Um, I used uh, dormicidin and torbogesic, okay. torpinol. Um, what I like about that is that the torb keeps their feet on the ground and this horse is a little bit of a kicker. Okay. Go ahead and, okay, now Pat, you're gonna come over here and hold my butterfly, just hold it down. After I collected the blood, I went ahead and put a new sterile pair on because this hand did touch, to hold the vein off, it did touch the horse's neck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this will be for my prepping. And then I'll, we'll scrub the horse with a sterile scrub mm -hmm. with a stifle. And then I'll put a new pair of gloves on for injection just because I, I want to eliminate as much debris that I have on my hands mm -hmm. for joint infections. Okay. So that's why I go through quite a few gloves. I did invert this a couple, quite a few times. Mm -hmm. And then you just, right? Mm-hmm. Fine. And so the, that dispensing tip just keeps the blood going down the side of the concentration device so it doesn't get foamy or, and there's no splatter. So we've got 87.1, so we're going to have to take some water out of the counterbalance there uh, to match the 87.1. And I put Before that to the side because the bottom's not sterile anymore. Yep. Oh, good point. Okay. So um, we want to open the centrifuge. And the Eppendorf, we're going to spin it for 10 minutes at 3,800 RPMs. So we'll take the matching counterbalance and put it in. And then take the whole blood and put that in. Close the top. And see, we are, we are on RPM. That's right. So... So we've got, didn't get quite get 60, but a really nice uh, buffy coat um, between the plasma and the RBC. So the next thing we'll do is, is put it on the bench top processing station, putting the concentration device on that. And you'll see right there that you're, we're going to want to bring that up to uh, typically the six line. Um, so we'll slowly turn the dial until that locks in and then um, now we'll just keep on turning to the cone there and we can stop until you see the buffy coat get up to the six I think you got it that's good okay so at this point we'll take off the platelet pour and then put a red cap on it and then you can either dispose of that, or if you were doing protein concentrate, you would filter that uh, platelet pore plasma down. Okay. And so then now we'll take the 12 ml syringe and do the same thing, just push that on top. And then this is going into a joint. So you, you could, let's go up until the buffy coat gets right in there. So as you, as the buffy coat kind of gets to the top, um, there we go. There's gonna be a little poof of red and then stop. There it is. So we actually pulled two different um, injection mixtures off of that. One of them, the lighter one is for the joint. And then what we did with the leftover PRP is we uh, put another syringe on top and actually um, after they were mixed, uh, put the buffy coat into the second syringe. That's the one that you can see that's more red. So 
the second one is going to go into soft tissue, and then the, the lighter one is going to go into the joint, into the stifle. There you go. Okay, we just did a rough scrub on this area. I like really big margins um, because if the horse moves or pops her knee mm -hmm. um, forward, you will still not get yourself into trouble with sterility. Um, the other thing this horse is an injury, so there's a lot of scars I have to kind of avoid. Mm -hmm. But then I'll come in with my sterile gloves and do a sterile prep too, so um, to make sure um, we just keep everything on the surface completely sterile. Sure. Do you think it's a good job to you, Pat? Look how <laughs> nice I'm getting. Nice to have Aaron around here, isn't it? So I find the patellar ligament, mm -hmm. and then. I also have this before, so I know this horse has hardly any joint fluid in here. Mm -hmm. So I kind of know what I'm facing against. What's the length of the needle? It's a one and a half hours. Okay. This horse is an injury horse, as you can tell. And I'm actually getting mm -hmm. a little bit of hemarthrosis. I checked to see if I have joint fluid. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. right there. Just trying to open up that joint a little bit more. Because I know I have some problems with this joint. Mm -hmm. Arthritis joints are usually a little bit clearer than this. And I always stabilize that needle just because I, even when I screw it on, I want to make sure I don't have any mm -hmm. leakage. And if the horse kicks, I can hold that needle. Mm -hmm. um, And I can actually feel the crepitus in this horse's joint. She has so much damage in there. So now I'm going to inject this. Um, it, imp it impedes her movement. She can't extend this stifle very well. Uh -huh. So if you see that long scar, I'm actually going to inject it down the scar line to see if I can get some of this to remodel for us. She tore off her whole um, front of her muscles up her stifle mm -hmm. in an accident. So. Still doing it sterilely, but hoping I can get some of this muscle to remodel too. Awesome. When I do back leg injections, I always um, do a nice wrap of their tail. Now, this will hurt when you, they hit you in the head with it, but you won't get hair in your, your sterile field. Yeah. You won't get, um, you know, a horse really swishing their tail. So okay. I do wrap tails. Sure.